So now we are going to do the international ice patrol and ice reports. So quick history and purpose. Uh, the shipping areas in North Atlantic uh, have been dangerous. And uh, from 1912, it started after the sinking of Titanic. It struck an iceberg and all the interested parties, they came together and they decided that we form a group and uh, share a responsibility and do the ice navigation with collaboration and we'll form the reports. So just uh, to find and locate the iceberg, what are the limits? That's the main job by ships or helicopters. Main initiative taken by US, but Newfoundland is more to Canadians. So Canadians and uh, North American Ice Service are working together in this for this ice patrols. It's uh, called International Ice Patrol has two parts, Canadian Ice Service and North American Ice Service. Especially the peak season for them is summer where they do the most amount of ice patrol. The aim is to only monitor the iceberg dangers in the North Atlantic Ocean and give warnings to people to eliminate the risk of icebergs collision. So they are working for us, so mer merchant ships and all other ships. So duration and ice team is uh, from this North American ice service and US Coast Guard as ice international ice patrol and Canadian ice service. So they work from 1st February through August 31st by US Coast Guard and remaining time by Canadian Coast Guards. Grain banks are normally free of ice from August to January. So this is the Hercules aircraft. So they full, do full rounds. This is also part of your ice patrol. They will tag this uh, and mark and um, get the heights and they mark some boy uh, to locate them. Then there are some regulations required for them for ice patrols and to marking the area and where all the is their reach. They also check the motions of iceberg movements. The Coast Guard vessels also can do this. The com commercial vessels are also includes like voluntary based observation ships. But uh, why only Grand Banks is also Grand Banks is the main shipping route and location where you have this icebergs dangers. It's a major shipping route. Extreme currents are there, extreme temperatures are there. And a lot of icebergs, very fertile and rich minerals, uh, environmentally protection areas there, very sensitive, can get damaged very easily. A lot of fishing traffic, a lot of offshore traffic, and sailing vessels. So very congested traffic area, and a lot of dangers also, and very extreme temperatures. And also very poor visibility, fog and all. You can't even see the bow and you can't even see the iceberg in um, these places. So it's very, very dangerous. So because of so much problems, this Canadian and US, they came together and they start making these surveys and reports. And then it was uh, under SOLAS also and all SOLAS uh, parties, like states ratifying parties are also paying for that. It's like weather routing is giving you the warnings, but you have to take all the precautions and you are responsible. So you can see the tragic example on 1959 and 
set of struck an iceberg of 40 miles south of Cape Farewell, Greenland on her maiden voyage, first voyage, equipped with la latest electronic aids, sank without a trace, there's no trace, and 95 passengers and crew on board. Nobody survived, no trace of the ship. So that's a danger of your icebergs. So on ice class vessels, we have some enhanced X-band radars, so special radars for this class and vessels. Then how the data is given to us. So there are different models of making the high charts and datas. And this is where uh, your prediction and understanding come. So there are different types of current on which these charts are made uh, from the current rows. Vector mean currents are used to feed in this uh, models for tracking the icebergs drift. And these uh, charts are sent to us via safety net or nav text, email, or even in your net worldwide you have, you can download anytime. 